Hey guys! How's it going? Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for joining me on this next installment of uh, this wonderful life living abroad in Madrid. Um, so there's a little bit of shadow in this corner. I'm not sure if it's showing up for you guys, but uh, I'm gonna hope not and just angle it a little bit so you can see the most of me. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining me again today um, as part of this effort between my partner Christina Bates and I to answer as many questions as we can about what it's like to live here in Madrid as both a teacher and a student. Um, so we've covered a lot of topics in the past between um, Christina, um, Spencer, the blog on TT Madrid, and we're just trying to give you guys as much of an inside look as we can at things like job searching, um, apartment hunting, uh, public transportation, festivals, all the things you can do here in Madrid. And tonight I'm tackling another topic that is uh, equally as important, I think, not only to you, but to the people you are connected with in your life. And that is on cell phones. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different companies here, at least the top competitors, um, before I dive into the kind of options for the plans that you have here. Um, one of the biggest uh, cell phone companies here in Madrid is called Movistar. And it is it's sort of like any company in the States, um, like Verizon or AT&T. It provides things like internet, home phone, mobile phone, things like that. The whole package deals are available. Um, it's a Spanish owned company. Um, it's a subsidiary of the telecommunications company, telecommunications company Telefonica. Um, its two, I think, biggest competitors are Vodafone, which offers basically the same services, but it's a English company. And then next to that is Orange, which again offers the same mobile phones, internet, all of that, but it's a French company. So I've been asking about cell phone plans literally since before I left the country. I have a friend who does a lot of cruise ship contracts and I asked him like, how do you have a cell phone abroad? Like, what do you do? And he was like, well, you just buy a prepaid SIM card um, at a company like Orange. So Orange was actually the first company that I heard about when I was thinking about coming abroad. Um, and after that, it was a close second with Vodafone. So those are the two that I'm gonna talk most about because those are the ones that get the most recommendations uh, from people I've talked to. And they're the ones that most of my uh, peers have chosen to purchase cards from. So there are other companies such as Yoigo and Pepephone. I don't know as much about those. From what I understand, Pepephone is actually owned by Movistar and it's sort of like a cheaper version, um, smaller packages, less perks kind of thing. So your first option and probably the best option for when you first arrive in Madrid is going to be a prepaid SIM card. When I first arrived, I ended up going with Orange because, quite simply, uh, it had the shortest line. They were the most attentive to me in customer service, and they answered the most of my questions quickly. Um, which is not to say necessarily that I believe that they are the best company, like go with Orange. That was just, it was the easiest option when I first arrived. I was looking for housing. I was about to start the program, and I needed to be connected. Um, the original summer special that I had um, when I got here was for seven gigs of data. 100 minutes and it was 20 euro a month, which translates to I think like roughly 30 bucks, which is insane when you think about the package deals that you get back in the States that are like, you know, upwards of like $100 and stuff. And the best thing about the prepaid SIM is you don't need a contract, you just need a passport. And they take a photo at this machine and you, you pay for it with cash or credit and it pops out a SIM card. So the thing that you do need to, track, uh, do need to check though is that your cell phone um, is either already unlocked or is un or is able to be unlocked. Um, I was lucky because my phone, I, which is an iPhone 6s, it's a 6 or a 6s, I don't, I, there's so many of them I can't tell the difference anymore, but mine came unlocked. So all I had to do is there's a little hole on the right side of your cell phone, if you have a similar model, and you just pop something like a pin in there and it um, pops out the slot and you switch out the SIM cards. Um, so, but it's worth checking with your company to make sure that your phone is unlocked because if not, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for you. Um, the really great thing is that the EU recently passed this law this past summer where, um, the, all of your, um, all of your SIM cards that you get here, 
they're going to have free roaming. So if you get a SIM card in Germany, but then you come to Spain or to France or any, any countries in the EU, you're going to have the same standard um, charge. There's not going to be extra charges, which is really great if you do want to do a lot of traveling while you're here. Um, so since then, I uh, the, the plan that I originally had when I arrived with Orange was uh, extended about three months. So I got it in August and I had it for all of August, September, and October. But I received a notification saying, ah, this deal is over and now it's gonna be the same price, but you're gonna only have uh, three and a half gigs of data. So I decided to do a little more shopping around because um, I mean, obviously three and a half gigs of data is still quite a lot, but after having had the seven, I was like, well, what are the other options that I have here? So I looked over at Vodafone as well. Um, and they had some pretty similar packages. It was about three and a half gigs for the same 20 euro, but it was there that I started getting introduced to the idea of contracts, which at first I wasn't sure if we as um, non-citizens would be allowed to have a contract. Um, I was led to believe that you needed like a European passport. Um, but after speaking with someone at Vodafone, it looks like all you actually need um, is a valid passport and a Spanish bank account. Now, a Spanish bank account is something that TT can advise you on setting up, but it comes at a certain step in the legal process. And so the prepaid SIM is still going to most likely be your best option when you first arrive. However, I will talk just a little bit about the packages just to sort of give you an idea of what that looks like should you decide that you wanna go with that when you have the Spanish bank account and are able to. Um, the best one that I saw at Vodafone was a six gig uh, plan with uh, 200 minutes roaming in the EU and the United States should you decide to visit home. Your plan will still be just the same even though it's home in the States. Um, and it comes with this thing called a chat pass, which I thought was really cool because it meant that social media apps such as Facebook, um, Instagram, and WhatsApp were, um, or it might, it actually might just be something like WhatsApp that I think, so yeah, chat passes only for WhatsApp. Um, and it means that you get basically free, um, messages with WhatsApp and it doesn't really, it doesn't bite into your data at all. So you can use WhatsApp and I think also texting without, you know, paying for any extra for that. Whereas normally regular text messages cost you money. So that's why a lot of people in the EU, um, use WhatsApp and why it's so popular here in so many countries is because it's you don't get charged for it. So this adds an extra layer to that where if you went with this type of package, um, WhatsApp also doesn't eat into your data at all. So that extra six gigs can be used for things like Facebook, Instagram, whatever your heart desires, which I thought was really cool. Um, there's a minimum, I was told by the guy at the counter, of three months, but the Brochure said six, so that might have been sort of like a if you buy now for me kind of deal. He said minimum of three months, the brochure says six. Um, for the first six months, it's 2160 euro, which is still not bad for six gigs and free roaming, chat pass, all that kind of thing. Uh, after that six months, it's 27 a month. And you're gonna find that a lot of times, you know, for the first six months, it's really cheap, and then it goes up like another almost 10 euro, which still, compared to the States, not bad. Um, these packages can come with internet, um, home phone, all those types of things, or you can choose to um, leave those things. Uh, my apartment already came with those things, so I was just like, I only need, I only need the SIM card. Um, there was an additional option with Vodafone to add in this thing called a social pass, which I thought was really cool, and I started talking about earlier before realizing I was on the wrong subject. The social app, or the social pass, means that apps like WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook, all of those are then um, free and don't bite into your gigs, which I thought was a really great deal. And I was trying to kind of weasel him into admitting that there was some sort of con to this, um, but I couldn't, I couldn't get him to trip up, up over the deal. Um, so it seems like it's pretty legit. Um, I went over to Orange as well to look at their sort of competition deal. And what I got from then was 10 gigs of data, 100 minutes a month for 20, 20 euro 76 cents for this first six months, <clears throat> excuse me. And then 25.95 after the six months, which again, 
really good price for that much data. And I mean, the 100 minutes thing, I, I can count on one hand the number of phone calls I've made while in Spain, and it's only been for job interviews. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat that too much. Um, again, everyone uses WhatsApp and FaceTime and all those types of things. So in, in my mind, gigs are the most important thing. Um, the downside to the orange plan, however, is that there are, there's no social pass equivalent. Um, so apps like WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram are going into that data, but you have plenty. I've never, when I had the seven gigs, I never went through the seven gigs. I was always fine until the next month. Um, however, while roaming in the EU is included for this, uh, for this package, it is not included in the States as with Vodafone. So I don't know if that would be a deal breaker for anyone. I know I'm going home for Christmas for almost a month. So that the Vodafone package would work while I was home was also pretty appealing. In the end, what I decided to do, because I spoke with Orange Second in my exploration, um, and the last bit of advice that I will give you while you're looking for phones is check for the promotions. When I first arrived, there was a promotion, again, for the seven gigs, 100 minutes, 20 euro a month. And even though that promotion ended, when I went back to Orange to look at the other options, they had a new uh, promotion. And this time it was like uh, six gigs of data for 15 euro a month, no talk time, no minutes to call anyone. Uh, and that price would have was 25 cents a call, which again, I can, count, I can count on my hand the number of calls I've made and I haven't made any since um, graduating from TT. So I decided to go with that plan, currently paying 15 for this month, and I'll probably reevaluate again uh, in 30 days time. Every plan that you get, at least with the prepaid, it's 30 days. So you can either reload at the end of 30 days or choose a new plan. Um, so it's, it's really a pretty low hassle all in all. I've been really satisfied with all of the different options that I've been presented. Um, and as far as coverage goes, I've always found that it, unless you're on the metro, it's it's not going to be much of a problem. Oh, hey, Flint, do you know if uh, you're able to tether tether with any of the prepaid plans so that you can use your mobile data to browse your laptop? That's a really great question, and I actually am not quite sure of that. Um, what I can do is poke around for the answer. I'll ask some of my colleagues, and if they don't know, um, I can stop back in at one of the stores and check in for you because I think that actually is a really good point. Um, if your apartment doesn't come with internet or TV and things like that that you would be willing to pay for, um, I would be really curious to know about that. And I'm actually really curious for myself as well because I have an iPad that I use in class all the time and I would love to know if I could get some data for that um, to work with my kids. So thank you so much for that question. I'll do some poking around and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and as always, guys, if you have questions on this video, any other video that I or Christina have made, please feel free to comment. We check on these things a lot and we'd love to do some research on any questions we haven't answered because um, even though Christina has been here a lot longer than I have, and even though I'm learning a lot pretty quick, there's still a lot of things that I'm really curious about and I would love to know. So always open to questions and always open to exploring with you guys. Um, thank you for everyone who has watched this video live. Thank you to everyone who's going to watch it not live. I hope this was helpful for you. I feel like as I'm starting out, a lot of these videos are covering really basic things, but things that I was really anxious about before I came over. So uh, check out the website if you have any specific questions. Drop a comment below. Check out our Instagram because I've got some Instagram stories coming up later. So uh, keep an eye on our social media and I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a fantastic end of your day. Talk to you next time.